Well, this is exciting. There is some information here, albeit I guess it's leaked information. And by the way, I'm drawing from this particular website, which I will link to in the YouTube description down below if you want to check it out. Also a Reddit thread, and you know how Reddit threads go. <laughs> Very entertaining, that is for sure. And by the way, after I'm done talking, I will hand it over to Google's LM and let them take it away. And they really get into the nitty gritty of it all. So let me just go through this very, very quickly to begin with. So the 5080 will have super, and I mean super fast memory because it's using 32 gigabit per second GDDR7 memory, and that will equal one terabyte per second of total bandwidth. That's nuts. Uh, this is 40% faster, apparently, bandwidth than the 4080. The 5080 will have 10,752 CUDA cores. That's 11% over the 4080. However, this is 51% fewer cores than the 50. 90. Uh, some users are speculating that the 5080 will be faster than the 4090 due to the increased memory bandwidth. Keep in mind as I'm going through this, this is all speculation. People are, you know, just uh, using their best guesses. Uh, one user specifically predicts uh, it will be 10% faster in rasterization and 25% faster in ray tracing than the 4090. So if you have a 4090 now, would you want to go with a 5080? I don't know. Uh, the memory we're going to get into in a bit, how much memory supposedly is coming with the 5080. And I think that is the limitation when it comes to the 5080 at this particular point. I think what will happen is the 5080 will be released maybe with 16 gigabytes of memory, and then there'll be like a 5080 Super, and that will come with, who knows, 24 or 32, I don't know. But pricing is another uh, concern here. Uh, some people are predicting this is going to be anywhere between like 1000 to $1,200 US. So, you know, there's more information here about this, and I am, uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, I'm going to leave this to Google's uh, Notebook LM to really do a super detailed look at all of this, but head on over to this particular site and you can go through some of the information that they have on here. But I am so looking forward to actual, you know, reviews on these video cards when they are released and see how they actually compare to the 40 series, specifically the 4080 and the 4090, because, you know, if the 5080 comes with more memory than 16 gigabytes, because I don't, I don't think, well, actually it would be okay as long as you're not doing 4K, you know, if you have a 4K monitor and you want to run games at 4K, you're not, you're going to need probably more than, you know, 16 gigabytes, right? Because if you look at the specs here, for example, they're saying that the 5090 will come with 32 gigabytes. For the 5080, they're saying 16. Uh, you know, the 4090 right now has 24. So, right, more than the 5080. So this could be the determining factor whether, you know, if you have the 4090, you would not upgrade it because... You know, you got less memory on the 5080. But anyway, let me know your thoughts about all of this. And uh, toodaloo. New graphics cards, huh? <laughs> Gets yeah. the heart racing every time, even if it means sifting through a mountain of speculation and hot takes. Yeah, the rumor mill's working overtime on this one. But that's what we live for, right? Yeah. You've sent yeah. us a ton of Reddit threads, articles, all buzzing about NVIDIA's potential next big thing, the RTX 5080. So let's dive in, see if it's going to live up to the hype or more importantly, be worth the inevitable price tag. People are definitely fired up. To say the least. And the hottest topic seems to be that GDDR7 memory. We're talking brand spanking new tech here. Yeah, and some seriously eye-popping numbers being thrown around. 32 GBPs, if you believe the leaks, which, gotta admit, I always take with a grain of salt. Healthy skepticism is always a good look. But still, even if it's half true, that kind of speed. <laughs> I gotta mean something for us gamers, right? <laughs> like, what's it actually gonna do? Okay, so imagine downloading an entire movie, like, instantly. That's the kind of bandwidth we're talking about. Could mean crazy fast loading times, even for those massive open-world games. And 4K performance. 
buttery smooth, potentially. Of course, it depends how devs actually use it, but exciting stuff. Okay, but raw speed aside, what's under the hood? What are we looking at spec-wise? Leaks suggest 10,752C UDA cores, 400W TBP, and 16 gigs of that GDDR7 VRAM we were just drooling over. Sounds potent, but I'm already seeing some raised eyebrows in these Reddit threads especially about those CUD cores. Yeah, the 4090 comparisons are inevitable. Because on paper, at least, it's a step down, right? The 4090 boasts over 16,000 cores. Yeah. So are we saying the 5080 might actually be less powerful? Well, it's not that simple. Core count isn't the whole story. Plenty of other factors at play. Like what? Hit us with the tech deep dive. Clock speeds, for one. Rumor has it the 5080 could have significantly higher clock speeds than the 4090. Plus, there's talk of a beefier L2 cache, which basically means... I love they gotta jump in here, explain it like I'm five. What's L2 cache again? Right, so think of it like this. L2 cache is like your graphics card's short-term memory. Bigger the cache, the more information it can store for quick access. So instead of digging through its entire memory bank. Exactly. It's got the important stuff right at its fingertips. It can lead to some serious performance gains, especially in games with a lot going on visually. Interesting. So even with fewer cores, this thing could still pack a punch. Potentially, yeah. But again, we won't know for sure until we see some real-world benchmarks. Always got to bring us back down to earth, huh? Just keeping it real. Synthetic benchmarks only tell part of the story. We need to see how this thing performs in actual games. Fair enough. Speaking of real-world concerns, though, mm -hmm. let's talk about the elephant in the room. How much is this going to cost me? Ah, yes, the price. Always a touchy subject, especially with NVIDIA these days. And looking at these Reddit threads. Yeah. Yeah, people are already bracing themselves. The 4080 launch left some scars, let's say. To put it mildly, seems like a lot of folks are worried about history repeating itself, especially with those 16 GB VRAM rumors. 16 gigs for an 80 class card in 2025. I get the concern. Games are getting more demanding every year. That might not cut it for future proofing. Especially for anyone rocking 4K high refresh rate setups, I'm seeing a lot of should have been 24 GB minimum comments. And then you've got those whispers of a potential 5080 super variant floating around. Which naturally is fueling even more speculation. Like, <laughs> is NVIDIA gonna pull a fast one and release a slightly better version later? It's possible. Some leakers are suggesting that a super variant could pack those new 3 GB GDDR7 modules, imagine potentially 24 GB of VRAM. Now that would be a statement. But again, until we get official confirmation, it's all just a guessing game. Still fun to speculate though. <laughs> anyway, let's move on from the tech specs for a bit and dive into what people are actually saying about all this. Are they excited? Terrified? Let's find out after a quick break. <laughs> okay, we're back. Time to wade into the trenches of public opinion and see what folks are saying about these RTX 5080 leaks. Buckle up. Oh, I am. Should we put on helmets? Because these Reddit threads are a wild ride. We got everything. Cautious optimism, outright skepticism, and of course, no shortage of NVIDIA roasting. Gotta love the internet, right? Never a dull moment. For sure. Let's see. Okay, this one made me chuckle. Sounds like a very good $800 card. <laughs> this is from Rhino Fish Dog, by the way. I'm sure NVIDIA will price it fairly. That sarcasm is palpable. You can practically hear the air quotes. <laughs> and then, of course, the entire thread descends into a chorus of, yeah, right, and in my dreams. Can't blame people for being a little jaded. That 4080 launch is still fresh in everyone's minds. Speaking of, we gotta give a shout out to Truck Stick Burns for this gem. I wanna die every time I see a 4080 still sitting at $1,600. Like, I wanna upgrade, but come on. Yeah, I feel that. High-end PC gaming shouldn't require taking out a second mortgage. Seriously. Yeah. Okay, this comment from Magic Mulder really resonated with me. If it isn't faster than the 4080 Super, this thing has no reason to exist. They're not wrong. At a certain point, it's gotta be more than just iterative improvements, right? Exactly. But then again, not everyone's convinced that the lower CDA core count is a death sentence. Right, some people are pointing out that NVIDIA might be doing some interesting things under the hood. Like Nestle Drink says. Sometimes I feel like this subreddit forgets that stuffing in more cores isn't the only way to make a GPU faster. I mean, they, they've got a point, right? Absolutely. Architectural improvements, clock speeds, cache sizes, these all play a role. So back to that L2 cache thing. How much of a difference can that actually make? It's huge. Think of it like this. A bigger L2 cache means the GPU can keep more of the data it needs frequently close at hand. Instead of having to fetch it from the slower VRAM every time. Exactly. And that translates to faster processing, smoother gameplay, potentially even higher frame rates. Especially in graphically demanding games, that L2 cache can be a game changer. So bigger is better in this case? Generally, yes. And from what we're hearing, the 5080's L2 cache could be significantly larger than what we saw on the 4000 series. Huh. So maybe there's hope for those fewer CUDA cores after all. We'll have to wait and see. But it does highlight how much engineering goes into these things. It's not just about throwing more cores at a problem and calling it a day. True, true. But even if the 5080 ends up being a performance beast, 
there's still that 16 GB VRAM situation looming over everything. Yeah, that's not something to brush aside. Games are only getting more demanding, especially at higher resolutions. I'm seeing a lot of comments like this one from Eferida. Ugh, an 80 class card needs at least 24 gigs these days. And they're not wrong to be concerned. Future proofing is important. Nobody wants to drop a grand on a new graphics card only to have it choking on new games a year later. Which brings us back to those 5080 super rumors. Ah, uh, yes, the inevitable super rumors. <laughs> Always gotta keep us on our toes. So is this just NVIDIA being NVIDIA, you think? Holding back a slightly better version to release later at a premium? It's a pattern we've seen before, that's for sure. Remember the 4080 12 GB? Don't remind me. <laughs> Not NVIDIA's finest hour, to say the least. Yeah, that one left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Felt like a cash grab, plain and simple. And if they try a similar tactic with the 5080, well, let's just say it wouldn't be a good look. Understatement of the year. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. Specs, price concerns, the whole VRAM debate. But I think the real question is, where does NVIDIA go from here? Are they even listening to what gamers want? Or are they too busy counting their mountains of cash? It's an interesting position they're in. On the one hand, they're the undisputed kings of the high-end GPU market. But on the other hand, they're walking a tightrope. One wrong step, and it's a long way down. Exactly. Alienate your core audience, and someone else will be more than happy to step in and fill the void. Someone like the... AMD's been awfully quiet lately, haven't they? They have. Maybe they're just biding their time, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Could be. And frankly, a little healthy competition would do this market some good. Agreed. Competition is good for everyone, mm -hmm. except maybe NVIDIA's bottom line. Maybe so. But it usually means better products and better prices for consumers. So... Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, indeed. Anyway, this has been a fascinating, if slightly anxiety-inducing, look at the state of the PC gaming landscape. And we're not even done yet. Oh, right. We've still got a whole other section to get through. But first, a word from our sponsors. Just kidding. No ads here, folks. Pure, uncut tech talk. Straight to your ear holes. All right, let's wrap this up after a quick message from me to you. Stay tuned. All right, so we've looked at the leaks. We've heard what people are saying. But what does it all mean? Is this the future of PC gaming we're looking at? Well, one thing's for sure, NVIDIA is not afraid to push the envelope. I mean, just think about how far graphics have come even in the last few years. It's incredible. Yeah, no argument there. Games look insane these days. But I also keep thinking about the cost of all this. Are we about to hit a wall where only, like, the super rich can afford top-tier gaming? It's a valid concern. High-end PC gaming has always been a bit of a luxury hobby. But yeah, if prices keep going up at this rate, right. it's not sustainable. And that's the balancing act, right? NVIDIA's got to make money. I get it. But they also don't want to price themselves out of the market entirely. Right. It's a delicate dance. Because, let's be honest, there's always going to be someone willing to pay top dollar for the absolute latest and greatest. Oh, yeah. Someone in the Reddit threads even said, everyone's going to complain about the price and then pre-order too. Probably true. But still, alienate enough of your core audience and someone else will be happy to swoop in and take your place. Speaking of egg, <laughs> what about AMD? They've been awfully quiet lately. Think they'll finally make a move with the 5000 series. It'd be great to see some real competition at the high end again. For sure. A little competition keeps everyone honest. Exactly. Drives innovation, keeps prices in check. But whether AMD can actually deliver, that's the big question. Guess we'll find out soon enough. So much riding on this 5080 launch. It's like NVIDIA setting the tone for the next generation of PC gaming, you know? Big time. Yeah. And everyone's watching. Gamers, competitors, the whole industry. It's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out. Mm. We kind of say all the speculations got me hyped in a cautiously optimistic kind of way. As always, got to manage those expectations. Nothing's official until NVIDIA says it is. Very true. So, yeah, to everyone listening, don't go pre-ordering anything just yet. Wait for those independent benchmarks, see how it actually performs in games. And hey, maybe even wait for those 5080 super rumors to pan out. And most importantly, before you even think about buying, ask yourself what you really want from a graphics card. Do you need the absolute bleeding edge, or are you better off with something a little more sensible? Perfectly said. All right, everyone, that's it for this deep dive. Hopefully you've learned something, had a few laughs along the way, and maybe even got a little fired up for the future of PC gaming. And hey, if those 50D benchmarks turn out to be as good as some people are hoping, well, maybe we'll all be eating our words soon enough. Maybe so.